I'm going to just talk a little bit about the course, about um, my background, and then show you the part of the course that's in Canvas so that you can look around, get familiar with it, because you're going to do a little bit before our first class meeting on Wednesday. Um, so this is a hybrid class, and actually you are you have two classes, right? There's two sections that you signed up for. You've got English 120 and you've got English 95. Um, so English 120 is a hybrid course. We will meet once a week and then we will do activities online, so about half and half. Although I kind of want you to think of this our arrangement as sort of one big course even though there's two courses one big course that's six units four units are online and then there's our two units um, where we meet face to face i think that can help you kind of think about what we're doing so uh, there'll be a lot that you're that you're doing online so this video is going to show you how some of that looks the english 120 part in particular i'll talk more about the english 95 Part at our first class meeting um, and I have ideas about what we're gonna do uh, when we meet once a week but I welcome your ideas as well because this is kind of a new um, approach to teaching hybrid prior to COVID usually a hybrid course would feel more like a face-to-face -face course with a little bit online and it's kind of flipped now where i want you to think of this course more as an online course with a face-to-face -face element that's really about helping you connect with me connect with each other because those are important parts of learning we learn through human relationships and so that's part of what has made the pandemic a little bit hard i think um, but also so that you can ask me questions and get a real instant answer um, and read my facial expressions and see my gestures and things that help with communication. Um, but I also want you to uh, come into the classroom first day, second day, you know, every time we meet and help uh, share what you think would make that time valuable and get the most out of when we actually do meet. But also, the online components are important components of both of our courses. And to be quite honest, I'm not entirely sure there isn't going to be a point in the semester where we're going to have to fully shift online. It depends on the county and the health order and the situation of what's going on. Um, and so if that is the case, we'll be fine. We'll be comfortable. We'll, it, it will, we'll miss our human um, in-person contact, but we'll shift some of that to um, using a, the video conferencing tool that we use, and it won't feel very jarring, and it will just kind of, you know, we're, we're kind of prepared for that um, if that is the eventuality. So what I want you to do uh, is, again, to look around our course. Um, I want you to do a small activity um, if you can before we meet to help you get um, familiar with how the course works and then when we do meet we'll log in together while we're in person and we'll make sure everyone's clear on how to find things and what to do and we'll meet each other uh, which is really important and um, I'll talk more about uh, the course. I'm sure some of you might have questions about my grading policy which isn't a traditional grading policy. I don't grade with points or um, percentages. I use a contract grading system so that you can focus on learning. So usually students have some questions about that, but I'll answer all your questions when we meet and we'll do one of your activities for next week together too while we meet um, face to face. So I do have some plans for what we might do. Um, my thinking um, that, you know, we will answer questions first. We'll do an activity uh, together because it helps to do um, activities together, not do everything on our own, um, and and we'll do some meet and greet stuff. And then, again, I welcome your ideas for what we do with our face-to-face -face meetings, but also what we do, what the course design um, looks like as well. So if you have any feedback about what would make something easier for you, I welcome that too. Okay, so now we're going to shift into looking at the Canvas space and how um, to move around and how to make sure you see everything that's available to you.
So what I'd like to do next is go through the course environment with you to help you navigate our space and campus. This home page is a static page, which means it will never change. You'll find a nice visual to help you recognize that you're in the right place, a general description of the course, and a list of the student learning outcomes. I also have my contact information here so that you have easy access to it. Please don't hesitate to reach out to me for any help. Your success is important to me. I'm your biggest advocate. There is a link to a Q&A forum. Should you have any trouble navigating our course or accessing an assignment or general questions, you can post it here. Again, this page will never change, except at the top of the page are the buttons for the starting page for each week. Each week, you'll want to click the new button to begin working. So you'll see a week one button, a week two button, a week three button appear. To get started, click start here. For our course each week, you will have an overview page, which includes a list of your activities or assignments that are due. This week zero is special, however, because these are all optional activities. They are not worth credit towards your grade, but they are worthwhile because they are activities for course readiness. They will truly help you be successful in the course. Notice there are links to each one, which will allow you to jump to that particular page. Again, you will always have an overview page like this one for each week of the semester. Above the list is some introductory information and goals for this section. Below are tips for moving through the module. This note directs you to click the next button here, which takes you to the next page or item. You will move through each week or section by clicking the next button here on the right or the previous button on the left. When you click next, you will see some background information on me, your instructor. We will have a discussion board in our first week where we will get to know each other better, whereas this page focuses on my teaching experience and interests. You can also see my communication preferences below. Next is a page with some resources from Canvas. There is a video from Canvas that provides a general overview of the interface, in particular how to use some of the features in the dashboard, calendar, the inbox, all these important buttons here on the left, including the help button where you can find the Canvas guides again and uh, contact Canvas support. Steps for how to change your profile picture are provided, suggestions for your notification preferences. I often send reminders and tips through notifications. This page has some resources that were created by the state of California for students who have never taken an online class before. Video topics include getting tech ready, organization, managing time, communication skills, etc. An online course is a different learning environment from a face-to-face -face one. These are all resources to help you. Each link takes you to a multimedia presentation or a text script if you prefer. These are all optional viewing materials. The next page is information for recommended browsers and capabilities for using Canvas on a computer and a mobile device. I have heard that browsers are often the problem and the fix for Canvas issues. If you're having technical trouble, try updating your browser to see if it solves the problem. There's also a note about ConferZoom here, which I'll be using for office hours. And occasionally I will, I will offer optional Zooms where we can do a homework assignment together. Next is a page for contact information for support. You will find the email and phone for Napa Valley College's IT service desk and our distance education technician. 
the next page is a Q&A forum or discussion. It's also linked to the home page. You can use the link to get to this troubleshooting space at any time, post any question you have about the course, and I will respond, but also students can respond to each other here as well. Some of you may do schoolwork late at night or some other time when I'm not logged on. If you see a classmate post a question and you know the answer, feel free to help and support one another. The final section of the module covers areas of the syllabus. I've linked the full document version, which is identical to what you will find on the syllabus link to the left. It is a best practice to read the entire document before or on the first day of class. If you need help finding grades and feedback, you can watch this video. I will provide feedback within a one week of an assignment due date. I will be using rubrics, um, but be sure to read the grade goals section of your syllabus that explains my grading policy and send me any questions you have about it. This page has some information on student support resources. I don't cover every resource on this page, but if you look to the left in the navigation list, you'll see a student services link. And if you click on it, you'll see a more complete list. But I've, but I've highlighted a few here. The Writing Center on campus is free for all students and they offer writing support. So tutor specialists are available for live virtual tutoring. They use a system called WC Online to book the tutoring appointment. And then usually the sessions are in a version of Zoom. So there's information there on how to contact them. The link to the website is there. And the Writing Center does do workshops as well. And they have um, a non-credit course if you want to spend a lot of time working on your writing and development outside of what this class is already having you do. I have information on the Math Center here because I know many of you are enrolled in math, so I wanted to make sure that you've seen this. And then NetTutor is an online tutoring service for a variety of disciplines where you can submit um, a paper and they give you feedback on the paper and they send it back to you and that might be something that um, works for you. So look into that if um, that helps you, particularly in another course. Um, if you have a big paper in another course and you don't have time to visit our writing center, you might uh, do that. The library is available. They have laptops, they have hotspots that you can check out. Um, so please uh, check out something if you need it. If you have a laptop and you know it's kind of sketchy, if your internet cuts in and out, go pick up one of our devices that can help you succeed in your courses. They are available on a first come first serve basis. So if you think you might need one, I do recommend you try to get one within the first week or two of the semester. There's librarians on site. There's also librarians on online who you can chat with, particularly about research that might be helpful for our course this semester. There are textbook resources through the library, of course. They do workshops, um, and there are desk computers in the library and study rooms available, at least for the moment, and let's hope that continues for the full semester. The speech lab is something that you can book, um, so look into that. There might be a assignment you have for a different class where you need to give a speech, and um, so that's a good resource. Cranium Cafe is the system that student affairs or student services uses. So if you have a question um, for admissions and records and you don't want to physically go down there, uh, the Welcome Center, um, Counseling, Transfer Center, uh, EOPS, Financial Aid, Veterans, um, if you don't want to physically go on campus and ask a question in one of those offices, you can uh, meet online with someone and they use the Cranium Cafe system. So I have linked here for you a video that shows you how to schedule an appointment with counseling, but it shows you the system that you would use to schedule it with one of these other services. So you would just go to the Mesa webpage and then you'll see the Cranium Cafe links for you to book an appointment with them. So it works the same way. The food basket is available for students who need access to food services. So there's a phone number and an email here for you. Typically, I think it's usually food pickup Mondays through Thursdays. They haven't entirely confirmed their hours with me yet. So as soon as they do, I'll update this. Um, but that is available to you. 
um, you can pick up uh, some groceries. I will just share with you that when I was in my second year of college, uh, this kind of service wasn't available and I could have used it because I ate potatoes almost every meal for like an entire year. So, you know, if you need food services, this is available for you, so please take advantage. The Student Health Center is also available for free psychological and medical health services. So we have a nurse practitioner and we have an MFT, a, a mental health therapist, available so there's a phone number where you can schedule an appointment and there's also a link to the website here check the website you might see information pop up about covid testing about vaccines um, so seek out those resources as needed um, but we do have a health center that you um, have access to as a student on our campus finally there is a student lounge space where you can interact responsibly as you would in a face-to-face -face class during breaks or before and after class meetings. Now, if you have been following along with me, you will notice that you cannot go any further, which means that you have reached the end for the week or the section. Again, this course has been set up for you to navigate from the home page, then click on the start button for the week we are working in. However, there are links on the left there is a link called Modules that takes you to a view of the course organized by weeks and due dates. You can use this view to navigate to a particular assignment if you don't want to go through the homepage links. But I strongly encourage you to move through the class the way I have intended it because what often happens by using this view is that a student misses instructions and might end up with an incomplete on an assignment. Again, my preference is you go to the overview page for the week from the course homepage and use the links there. This link takes you to a quick syllabus page where you have easy access to attendance policies, contact information, grading policies, software suggestions. This is a link to the grade books. You can check your progress in the course at any time. Ignore the final grade percentage totals column since this course does not use a point system. Currently, Canvas does not let me delete that column, but you'll see check marks when you complete assignments here, which can help you stay on top of your grade goals. I will also email you a grade check periodically. There is a confer Zoom link, which you can click to join my weekly office hour. If I'm already talking with another student, it will put you in a waiting room until I am ready for you. You can also email me for an appointment on a different day and time. There is also a chat feature. So if I'm logged in and you're logged in, we can chat in real time about any questions you have. Notice the smart thinking and net tutor links, a link to student services for a complete list and contacts a link to the campus bookstore. So now you've had a complete introduction to our online course environment with this video. You can watch this video as many times as you need to, and please don't hesitate to message me with any questions you have before the course begins.